Mildly amusing. Good morning, everybody. Mildly. Good morning, Bethany, for your Monday Empowerment Show. And Bethany was just about to tell me an awkward beach story. So I said, wait, let everyone <laughs> hear your story about a woman who's about to turn 45. What? Let's 45. Because you know, I'm you're y'all eight years younger than me. So all right. So, you know, as we're talking about empowerment and all this stuff that we do, all right, <laughs> empowerment and powerful. And when you do this work, you know, old patterns and things, they start to fall to the side a little bit until they rear their head again. But you're so much more conscious that you see it. This is one of those stories. <laughs> so, you know, Dylan and I are driving down to the beach and it's like a beautiful 80 degree day. So we're going to the beach and, um, you know, I'm sort of used to, I'm in North Carolina now, but I'm used to the Rhode Island beaches where like everything's all packed and, you know, you got to like fight for a spot and you're in that right. sort of fighting mode, you know what I mean? For a parking spot. <laughs> so, you know, I'm coming on in and then I see a spot. Well, I like to back in to my parking spot. So I put my blinker on and I move up a little bit, you know, and then it was so fried green tomatoes. So I don't know fried green tomatoes <laughs> where these young boys like whoosh, go flying into my spot oh my god I'm just like you've got to be kidding me and then I had this out-of-body experience where I went back to sort of old angry me and you know, I, still have some anger, but I got out of my car <laughs> walked up to them and I'm laughing at myself like what do you think you're actually going to do I'm like I don't know what I'm going to do you know you have the inside conversation and I was like oh my what god. are you doing <laughs> like did you not see my blinker he goes no I didn't and he was so indignant and so like I was so pissed and I've never, I've literally never been treated like that before. It was so wow. like, it was totally funny, like out of body experience where I'm just yes. sort of not enjoying the moment, but I'm just like, wow, this is really interesting. <laughs> like I'm being all angry. And it's not even that I was that angry. I was sort of, it was like playing an old role, playing an old yeah, part yeah. Like, me that I used to be, you know what I mean? Where I'd be super pissed by that and want to kill somebody. And I really wasn't, <laughs> but I was sort of playing the role again, which is good because it means like our patterns are, you know, diminishing and we're starting to step more into our power. So I'm seeing all this as I'm like, get, like, really? I'm like, I have a kid in the back of my car. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so, <laughs> and these were two other boys. And I'm like, not one of these kids, like there's no like team players or there's nobody else who's going to like come to bat for me and be like, dude, let's just move. And he did tell his friend, like, there's so many other spots. He goes, exactly. She can go on the other spot. And oh I was my like, my God. So the only thing I left was karma. I'm like, this is coming back to you. <laughs> I had nothing left. I was like, don't oh my you God. worry. I said it twice. I said, this is coming back to you. Oh and then my I went back God. to my car. Of course, I get down and it's like a bazillion spots, but it was just the whole like thing of it all. And I was <laughs> like, mommy, what did you say to them? I heard you say, it is in the car. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> So that was, that was that was me this weekend before Easter. All right. Um, yeah. I'm getting ready to do some fisticuffs at the beach. Now, was that on Easter Sunday in honor no, of? In honor of, of, of <laughs> it was luckily not, but it I, was within the realm of the, you know, the holy days. It was definitely right. in the realm of. It was, it was before Jesus had arisen. He was in the cult, so you could just misbehave in those three days from <laughs> Friday. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'm getting my timing wrong, but I'm pretty sure as a lifelong Catholic forced to go to Catholic schools with angry nuns married to Jesus. Yeah, um, yeah. And anything on Easter is when he, you know, came out of the crypt. So you're yeah. still there. And I all was. sins were forgiven during those okay. three days. Oh my God, that's yeah. the theme of the movie, The Purge. You get three days to <laughs> <laughs> all your worst behaviors come out. Oh my! Um, well, that's a good, real, a really good theme because let's talk yeah. about how does one have that kind of a transformation where you self-described angry person um, yes. have more space from it and witnessing can actually play with it because there is a little bit of a purge element in the, what we tell people to do, except that they're not physically um, murdering, flame no. or strangulating um, oh. people. No. There's more of a purge. <laughs> uh, and it's not just screaming and carrying on like a tantrum, like you would see someone have a tantrum that was like embarrassing. It's right. we call it tapping and ranting, right? Using we the act of pressure we to do. tap 
life and changing. allow yourself to complain. Yes. And it's the most amazing, A, yes. most amazing feeling in the world yes. to let your own anger and frustration and complaining. And if you've ever been told not to be a complainer, this will just allow your energy to flow. And it's not just any energy, right? It's a special wow. flavor of empowerment energy that you can't get. You can't get it from here. No. You can't no. get it from here. <laughs> um, it's not the same energy as diplomacy, which we also have. And it's one of our ways. But sometimes diplomacy doesn't work, right? Or as being magnanimous or compassionate and forgiving, you still get to keep those qualities. Yes. Um, but in the purge, as we shall now call it, <laughs> you get to tap rant and move some really frustrated, big, how dare you energy, as well as um, super judgmental, you stupid idiot energy, right? Yeah. Tapping while you rant like that. Yeah. I hate you energy. It's a really good one for I hate you energy. <laughs> energy, yes. When you do yeah. it while tapping, something magical happens. Yeah, it does. Um, and so I know, let's each talk about what's magical happens for us when we tap and rant. Um, for me, because I'm not often in touch with my, because I'm very heady, um, you know, my whole engineer brain. Um, and, I'm all, and I'm a super doer, right? I'm always like, I'm good, right? But yes. so for me, I'm not often that in touch with how I deeply feel. Um, I like the feelings of excitement and joy, but not the darker feelings. And um, so for me, when I do that process on purpose and I allow, it actually kind of brings energy up and I hear with my own ears and I have some sizable ear. Um, <laughs> oh, and I have a fishtail. Can you see my fishtail braid? I did see That's yours. I like, nice little bit messy. That my yeah. stepdaughter, my little my stepdaughter Emma, the I have two Emmas, the second Emma that I have, um, <laughs> braided my hair last night. And ladies, it. it's conditioning. So I'm also multitasking. <laughs> um, it's full of conditioner. Anyway, I digress. Perfect. Um, I get to hear with my large and ample ears <laughs> my own emotion that I didn't even know how upset I was. Yes. Right. And so a little bit of annoyance can be the tip of the volcano on a whole. So because you're very different from me, you'll feel yes. anger in your system. I don't know. <laughs> I'll notice I feel judgmental. like oh, that, that, that. Mm. But I'm smiling on the outside. Right. And I'm accommodating a lot because I didn't have access. So all of a sudden I can hear like, holy crap, I'm really mad about this. Like, this is not okay. This has to change instead of my tendency to accommodate or normalize. So tapping and ranting for me opened up like a, see, sort of like one of those, don't they call that like a come to Jesus moment? Oh my God, it's such Easter Monday. It is. It is. I have to like really sit with the fact that I'm actually more angry, <laughs> upset, and sometimes hurt because sometimes yeah. after you rant, what happens? Sadness, hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I really hurt my oh. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> frustrated, like the angry cry. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have to sit with that and make some new decisions when, when that energy has kind of passed. Um, yeah. so how about you? What do you learn? Well, for me, <laughs> um, whereas I do have moments in my head, um, that is not what's happening when I'm, typically tapping and ranting. For me, I'm already angry and I do have a lot of rage. I have a lot of anger inside and it's it's often coming out. And not, you know, when I say that I, I tease, but it, it, you know, I'm not like a yeller and a screamer necessarily, but I am more of a seether, you know, and, and then <laughs> exuding everywhere. That is probably worse probably than just yelling and screaming. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I'm so pissed and poor Tim's clearly the brunt of it all mostly. Um, so for me, when I'm feeling super angry, so I'm feeling it and I know it's there, I do have to like pull myself away and be like, okay, you need to do some tapping. So I go so that I don't explode it everywhere and yeah. I don't like eke it out everywhere because it's, it's, it's out, it's everywhere. My daughter, you know, it's gross. So now I'm tapping and ranting. And then on the other side of that for me is typically sadness. Um, and it's, it, you know, for me, it's my, it's the old wounds that usually come up. So I'm either 
really clear about why I'm angry. And maybe there is something I do need to say. I need to advocate for myself potentially, but more yeah. often than not, there's some sadness. And what I need to ask for typically after I rant and rave is I need some love or I need a hug or I need, right. you know, and it's usually towards Tim. Um, Cause you know, he's my man, he's my space. You know what I mean? And I'm like, so when I really get to those moments, I'm like, ah, oh, geez, here we go again. You know, I just want to be angry and pissed off. And I'm like, but what I really need is him to hold me and tell me yeah. that he loves me and just be with me and snuggle. That's 90% of the time what I need. Or I need him to tell me how amazing I am or what I just did was so amazing, which he will do. And he will do it days and days and days. Like That is really amazing. And I know he's, <laughs> he's, he means it and he's doing it because I said it and I don't care because I'm, I'm, I want to yeah. hear it. I totally want to yeah. hear it. So I'm just like, thank you. And he goes, yep. And he's so happy. To <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, over I'm the time. Right thing. That's right. So that's, so that's the miracle for me. The miracle for me is, is getting, is getting what I truly need and what I truly want, which is more love surprising, yeah. which is more holding and more cuddling, more FaceTime, more connection. So when I, and then I can ask for it. So the anger keeps it away, keeps the distance yeah. and yeah. It, and it and it keeps you know and it furthers what I don't want even though I and I and now I see it so clearly it's really funny I'm like and I, I can talk myself through it now because I've been working on it for so much and I'm like all right you don't really want to be angry at him so say what you need to say but really what you want is to hold him and for him to you know hold you and you want to yeah. this. and then I'm like okay you know it's a little toss back and forth and then I'll lean in and then I'm like wow I actually and then my needs are getting met and then I'm so much more joyful. That's when my joy comes in and my pleasure comes in and my, you know, and I'm just, you know, energized and all of that. So all that's the miracle for me for allowing that hostility <laughs> to move yeah. through and not letting it see that all over the place. And I think the important thing as business women um, and conscious women and, and is that whatever you, the action that you take after tapping and ranting in the purge is yeah. actually an empowered action. Yeah. So Very. for me, and I think that so many people are going to relate to either one or the other, other, right? Like some people will say, oh my God, I know I'm angry all the time and then I feel bad and then it's like spinning on my family. Whereas I used to never be angry. So I would avoid the thing that was bothering me in a way that wasn't healthy, right? An avoidance technique because I'm not going to feel the anger. I'm avoiding the anger, which means I'm avoiding really getting clear, making a decision, setting a boundary. I mean, that kept me when in my 20s, that kept me in a bad marriage for nine years trying to get out of that marriage, right? And so I avoided, and I couldn't make an empowered decision because yep. I wasn't really honoring what was happening. And for you, you could be really angry, you could end up in battle. Yep. Right? And that isn't really what we want either. So it leads well, to huge waste of energy too. So the battle yeah. and that constant, it's it, it leads to exhaustion. It leads to not certainly doesn't lead to creativity. Certainly doesn't lead to being more right. focused and more engaged in the work that I'm doing. Right. It's like we think we're fine. Like I can sort of compartmentalize and be like, I'm so pissed at him and then come back and do what I need to do. And it's not true. You I, I've burned mm -hmm. through so much energy. And that was one of the symptoms for me was I'm exhausted all the time. Like, what the hell yeah. is happening? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it burns through energy for me too, because I'm trying to avoid feeling yeah. something, right? And and then I'm going through all these behaviors to prove that I'm not mad. And so, yes. <laughs> you know, this is such a great conversation because when we talk about empowerment, this is a pathway to empowerment that nobody else on the planet understands or talks about. I mean, do, have you ever heard of anyone talking about it? There's these amazing books right now, like The Power of um, Good and Angry, The Power of Women's Anger. But I think for the average woman reading that, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But how do I deal with my anger? How do I move it in a way that's safe, especially if I've been around angry people and I don't want to be that way? And yes. I think this purge tapping <laughs> <laughs> will not only purge the anger, but do it in a way that leads to empowerment. It's yeah. not just to get rid of anger because it's bad. It's to let it be heard, let it be voiced, hear your deeper needs. As Bethany said, for me, it's usually to hear where the boundary, need, like that I need to set a boundary and I'm avoiding it, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so let's just talk about in our few minutes we have left is how does that affect us in business? Right. So, you know, because here we are running this like mil over a million dollar company with a, with teams and we bring in new people all the time. You're training new people. We have live events. We're doing tons and tons of online launches. 
We have JV partners. There's many, many moving parts, and we're managing this company at a very high level. In yeah. addition to working, you know, being I'm um, being the on camera talent. <laughs> And so I know for me, again, if you are the type of person, no matter how smart I am here or talented I am on camera, you know, Ooh. when I can speak, if I avoid setting boundaries or getting mad the way I should against something that doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel fair, the energy feels off. If I have a huge avoidance pattern because I don't like to feel anger or even know how to feel anger, then I am not, I'm going to run a company into the ground, right? Because I'm yeah. going to be avoiding a lot of problems that need to be handled head on. On the other hand, you who actually train and manage most of the staff, we probably wouldn't have any staff. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, we probably wouldn't have any staff. We would not. We would not. We would not. And then, you know, on my end of it, it's interesting because I know, yeah, they would be like, you know, murdered, um, at least in my head anyway, um, along with all our clients too. So, you know, we'll just, you know, they'll just mow down. Maybe um, like, <laughs> we can't handle uh, our clients or yeah. our team. No, no. Like, clearly they would, yeah. And I, I don't think that's happening. It may, but I don't think it is. You can ask them when you see them. Um, and then the other uh, second part for me that has it has a huge impact on is that as I listen to my needs, because remember the anger sort of masking those vulnerable needs that yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. um, and then I start to listen and then I start to lean in and I start to honor it. Not only am I more energized, but I'm also learning to trust myself. And it mm -hmm. and that allows me to stand more powerfully, to start yeah. making quicker decisions, to start leaning into looking for solutions and all the things that come up in business. Whereas I would avoid that and not trust that, not trust yeah. myself not trust my intuition. But as you start honoring the needs and honoring and listening, it allows me to lean in more and to take risks and to do things that, you know, may have been challenging in the past. And now, right. you know, it's my everyday and you just keep up leveling from there. So it's that trust factor, which is really important, you That's know, as an so end result. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's definitely true for me too, because if I can't trust myself that I can, I can deal with problems, I can not avoid confrontation, I can handle things head on in a way that feels empowered, um, then we can't really grow. We can't really up level. We have to know that we can trust ourselves, um, whether it's in our primary relationship that I can talk through a problem or, yep. or in running a business and training teams. Um, I just want to see if we have any thought. M Natalie said, that's the key part for me, learning to trust myself. Deborah said, hi. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. And so what, what I what I want to make sure I say again is that this is from moving your empowerment energy. And that's if you want to say it that way, because it sounds better. I'm moving my empowerment energy. This is the empowerment energy channel. And you have to allow that anger to move. Now, unless you're going to start punching people in the face, which we don't recommend, the tapping and the ranting are the dream combination because um, not only do you it's not like complaining where you're just complaining and then you feel like crap afterward when you tap at the same time as complaining and ranting and raving like a crazy person it changes your energy it's probably one of the greatest use for tapping natalie said specifically trust having anger it doesn't feel safe all the time and that's because i repressed it for way too long yeah and sometimes we've had people in our life who've been really angry and that's been scary um, you know, some of the angriest, and it's just, these are the two sides is people who never want to feel angry and people who are angry, all, feel anger all the time. And either way, everyone's terrified of it. And I'm telling you that this can change your life tapping and saying <laughs> F-bomb and saying, I hate you and I hate this. And then just let it go. And then the next day you will be in a very different place. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, isn't this a great Easter theme for purge tapping and saying, I hate you? Yes. Yes. To empowerment. It is an uncommon pathway, but you know what? It works because we're talking about energy, not talking about the little brain and all the amazing things the brain can do. No. The brain is not the empowerment engine. No, 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 no. If you get the anything from today. You know, hundred books on empowerment and still yes. have you acting like a mouse. That's you. right. This exactly. brain read every book on codependency and then stayed in a codependent relationship for almost nine years in my 20s. Uh, because I didn't, I was like, this is 
most fascinating information on COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's a page turner. <laughs> I had all this and I had no ability to get angry. So no, no, no. We, we're here for your empowerment every Monday. This is Margaret and Bethany, the Monday Empowerment Show. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.